Hey everybody, it's Chris, and today I'm going to do a little swipe on a cradled wood panel. And I'll kind of explain to you a little bit how I actually get these ready to paint. But first, um, in the last video that I shared with you, I had told you that we had gotten a puppy. Um, his name is Ranger, and he's a mini Australian Shepherd. And I realized um, after I loaded that video that I didn't share a picture of him. So this is actually, um, it's kind of a funny picture. Um, and it got quite a few cute comments on Facebook when I posted it, but we went to South Dakota last weekend to visit Jim's family and it was Ranger's first official road trip. So this was a picture that I took of him out the rearview mirror and let me see if I can get it in the right spot for you here. Um, so this is Mr. Ranger on his first road trip and I think we can safely say that he enjoyed himself. Um, looks like he's kind of smiling and after that, it was kind of difficult not to have the window rolled down for Ranger because he kind of felt like that was his right to have the window down. But um, he's a pretty good puppy. He's actually in the studio with me, so we'll see if, I think he's taking a nap, so maybe he'll be quiet. But um, So this is a cradled wood panel that I purchased online. I think it was from Rex Art. So this is how they were sent to me. Um, they're all uh, wrapped in plastic. And this is a deeper, I think it's one and a half inches um, deep. So it's kind of like the deep um, canvases that I like to paint on. And what I did was I used, this is the edge lock painter's tape. And so what I did was um, I taped all around. Now I did add a little bit of my cheaper paint. Uh, my goodness, I cannot talk today. I did add a little bit of the less expensive, just the blue painter's tape on the bottom of it because this is thick enough that it kind of takes two rows of it. So I just used the regular blue tape on the bottom row and then I use the edge lock. And then once I have that on there, I just take a plastic, um, I have like something for my Cricut. I have this little tool for my Cricut. It's kind of a plastic edged um, buffer, if you will, or. Um, our burnisher. So I just took this and kind of um, ran it along all of the edges of the tape. And then I used my Bullseye one two three primer. Um, I like the spray just because it's so much easier for me. So then I coated it with the Bullseye one two three primer. And then I lightly sanded after that um, just because I had some kind of little edges, which you can kind of see here. I've got, I still have a little edge um, that's a little bit rough. So I just took my, um, my little sanding sponge just to kind of knock that edge down and to make sure that I had a smooth surface. So today, my inspiration, um, I had done some butterfly swipes on canvases that I thought turned out really cool. Um, the problem with canvas is it's very hard to resin those. And I want to use my pigments that I've mixed up um, for the Shelly Art style. And I find that they're really beautiful if you can resin them to really bring them back to life. So I thought, well, if I bought um, panels, then that definitely will accept the weight of the resin. So this is a five by 15 panel, which is a little bit bigger than um, the canvases that I worked on, but I thought they were just so cool and they turned out so neat. In fact, I may go back and redo the Monarch butterfly because I have another pigment uh, or a mica powder that I think would be really cool with that. But So let me show you the inspiration for this particular butterfly. Now I'm going to tell you that I honestly, I'm calling it a pink swallowtail. I don't think it really does exist. I think this is someone that photoshopped or did something, but I just think it is so incredibly beautiful. And you know, if you've been watching me a while, I love pink. So <clears throat> whether it's a real butterfly or not, I don't care because I think it's gonna make a really cool painting. So um, I needed a couple of shades of pink. So I'm going with, this is kind of a medium magenta. Um, this is a deep magenta. Now all of these are like, uh, they're actually acrylic paints and then I've mixed in um, some iridescent medium to make them sparkle. I've also put in a little bit of the iridescent pearl fine high flow acrylic. Um, this is kind of a navy blue that I used in the first video with that Lazy Susan. I did add a little bit more of my endanthering blue to it to hopefully make it a little bit deeper, but all of my paints actually have some pigments in them, so I think it'll turn out really beautiful. And I'm hoping to give it that really um, iridescent butterfly effect. I'm also going to use some golden interference violet, and this is kind of an expensive paint, but I feel like it's worth it 
to use it in this type of a painting because I think it really makes a huge difference. Okay, so the first painting did not go as I had hoped. I had way too much blue in it. I didn't feel like the pink was as prevalent as I wanted it to be. So I decided to scrape, which you can see I've scraped it. And then I'm just gonna kind of splice in this video to what I've already told you. I am adding some quinacridone magenta into this color palette. So I'm um, still using the same color palette and going to lay down some white paint. I do feel like I might have had way too much white paint on here because I don't have to go over the sides. So it's not as important to have as much paint on here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use one of my cards here and kind of, kind of smear this around a little bit because I want enough paint to go over the edges, but I don't wanna waste as much paint. So I'm just gonna kind of take this out to the edge to make sure that I'm good. And then I've got enough and not too much. And it's okay if I've got a little bit of color there, those are the colors I'm using. Okay. And then we're gonna start by adding, I'm gonna do the quinacridone magenta. And hopefully we will have a much pinker painting this time around and not as much blue. So this is actually going to be three different colors of pink. So I think this will be much better too. I think this will give us, the, oops, give us the look that I wanted more than what I had before. And then this is the deep magenta, which is just a shade different than the quinacridone. I'm hoping we'll get those shade variances with the pink, just like the butterfly was. Sorry for my arms, guys. And then this is the lighter pink. And I think my pink got a little bit thick there sitting out. And then next I want to add in the Interference Violet. And I'm just gonna kinda do little streaks of this because I kinda want it to blend in. I don't want big blobs of this particular paint because I don't think it's a very pretty color if it's just by itself. Um, it's beautiful when the light hits it, but if the light isn't hitting it, it just kinda has this like creamy beige color. And I actually probably should've put that in between the pinks, but too late now. All right, the next we're gonna put in some of that pretty blue and I'm gonna be super careful not to get crazy with it this time because I really didn't think I had that much of it in there, but holy cats, when I started moving things around, it's like, wow, that was really a lot of blue. And I think I'm gonna try and put it over this interference color just to kind of help it blend in a little bit. I want some blue, but not the mass amounts that I had before. Okay, that should be pretty good. And then hopefully we still have some white showing once we start stretching. All right, and then I'm gonna put my cell activator in my little plate over here. And I'm just gonna use a business card to swipe because I find those, I think a business card is kind of a nice size for this particular project. All right, so I have a nice amount of cell activator. I'm going to start here at the bottom and swipe up. Wipe my card off so that I'm not cross-contaminating. And then I'm gonna come up here and come across. I kinda like to do a crisscross pattern when I do the cell activator. And I'm gonna start here and come up. So the one thing that I like about um, the one thing I like about the black cell activator is I feel like it's kind of has like some really great contrast. And I also think that I like it when I kind of start into the middle because it's super heavy right there. And I just ran that right back through my paint. Um, it's super heavy. And I think you get some really cool cells right at the beginning of the swipe. 
and I'm just gonna come back down here. And I know that I can blow that and um, soften up the line so it won't be a problem. I'm just gonna put a little bit right here. I think we need just a tiny bit more. Right in here. And right there. So I don't mind if I have a little bit of color showing, I just don't want a lot of color because this is a butterfly, so I really want that beautiful wing effect. There we go. All right. Okay, so now what I wanna do is just kind of blow these heavy lines out so that I don't have harsh lines in the painting. Okay, so I just kind of softened up these lines here, and then as we tilt, we should be just fine. I already feel like this is much better than the last time. I don't have as much blue, I have some very pretty coloring, and I don't feel like I have so much paint that I'm going to dump off all the really cool stuff. All right, so I'm going to start by going down off of this left end. I have my light set up. I hope I have it set up at a better angle for you today. I do want to try to retain some of the white that I have there at the top because as you remember, that butterfly did have white in its wings. So we're just gonna go over here, go off the top. Remember when you're tilting and you kind of get that paint going that you do want to, don't like, Keep it at a severe tilt. You kind of want to pick it back up and let it drape over gracefully. And then I'm just going to come back and I want to tip it down towards the bottom. And make sure that my bottom is going off of there. And then I just want to hold it here for a second and then we'll send it back down to get the weight of the paint more towards the middle of it. All right, I feel like this is super muddy looking and so is this. So let's see if we can correct that a bit and perhaps put some pink in here and swipe through it. And we're gonna put some pink right here. And let's see if we can swipe through that and make it look oh so much better because I don't think the cloudiness is very pretty. Do you? So we're gonna see if we can fix it. Just like that. All right. And then I'm just gonna take my business card with the cell activator and we're just gonna pull back through that area because I haven't completely tilted it. So I think we can still fix it. Gonna go right here with the black. And there we go, that's better. And see that took out that kind of haziness and then I just wanna blow this and soften it up a bit as well as this one down here. Okay, just like that. And then I'm just gonna kinda of tilt it down and then we'll take it back up again and stretch it out a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and 
kind of get rid of that bottom corner a little bit if I can while I've got the paint here. There we go. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tilt it back down towards the top. And see if we can kind of take it down off of this end because I need to cover this corner. And there, now it's moving. And I'm gonna just slightly tilt it because I don't want my paint to run off so quickly off of the top left. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of get it over the edge. Like so. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let that paint gently come back down. And what I'm gonna do is kind of help with a little bit on this edge. There we go. And now I wanna see if I can run it down and stretch out just a tiny bit and see if I can get that bottom corner looking as beautiful as the rest of it. And let it slowly stretch back up towards the top and get the weight of the paint evened out on the canvas. There we go. Definitely a much better outcome than the first attempt. Definitely has a lot more pink in it and just a small representation of the blue. So I think this one's a keeper now. Okay, so this will dry, I'll probably let it dry a couple of weeks um, just because I want to put resin on it and I don't want it to have any issues um, because it is on a cradled wood panel versus canvas. It's not like it's going to get air from below and help to cure that paint any quicker. So probably about two weeks and then she'll get a coat of resin and be back to her beautiful iridescent metallic shine. All right, guys. So that is a pink swallowtail butterfly, at least my interpretation of it anyway, if there is such a thing as a pink swallowtail. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.